Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, July 8th. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Rochelle Metzger. Thank you for joining us. We start off tonight with news of a fatal accident in Seat Pleasant. One man is dead and two others injured following a crash that happened around 12 noon at the intersection of Addison Road and Central Avenue. Authorities say the driver of a Burgundy station wagon suffered a medical emergency, causing him to lose control of his vehicle. A man who didn't want to be identified says the motorist was unable to stop and crossed over two lanes, colliding with a tow truck that was waiting to turn at the light. Station wagon was coming down at, at down Central Avenue, tow truck going up, light change. He just veered right, he just veered all the way over, slammed right into the tow truck. Put it like this: This is something you don't want to see again. You don't, you know, you don't want to see that again. Just the noise, uh, the noise and the impact of it, because the tow truck driver slammed on the brakes. He, you know. And he figured maybe Pop was going to just stop, but it was other cars on, you know, cars in both lanes. The two people that were injured are expected to be okay. Police are still investigating the incident. In other news, Prince George's County officials continue to ask for additional funding from state leaders to help restore the Piscataway Hill Slope in Fort Washington. Today, County Council Chairman Mel Franklin talked about the challenges that lie ahead with repairs. County leaders are asking O'Malley's office to match the $11 million budget already being dished out. It's a large amount of money. The county was very serious about making sure that we uh, didn't abandon those families and that we committed uh, a substantial amount of taxpayer dollars to, uh, to help in the situation. To be honest with you, there is not uh, a, an identified backup plan. Uh, uh, the uh, budget uh, provision regarding the $11 million doesn't speak to um, a plan B. Uh, it, is, it is a contingency to address the slope failure itself. Uh, if we can't address the slope failure, then we have to look at other alternatives. But those haven't really been identified um, in detail or a, a real cost figure attached to. Numerous residents are still displaced because of the May 5th slope failure. Franklin says there is no concrete timeline for when a funding deal will be struck or repairs will be made. Tonight, we continue to remember former Prince George's County Executive Wayne K. Curry as plans for his memorial service are underway. And joining us now is CTV Stephen Graves, who has a rare look into Curry's life that many people may not have had a chance to see. That's right. I had a very enlightening talk with one of his friends today, and I think a lot of people will be surprised by this one. Well, it can be safe to say that no one really knows you as well as your family or friends. And today, I got a personal look into Curry's life that only a close comrade would know. Howard Stone was a close friend to Wayne Curry and was also his chief of staff. It's no secret that Curry's leadership style could have been described as tough and stern, but as Howard explains, the former, former exec also had a softer side. But uh, people always saw the tough, uh, gruff exterior, but Wayne was really had a very, very kind and gentle heart. And believe it or not, he was shy. <laughs> and I remember that when we first started his campaign for county executive, uh, I would encourage him, we would be at picnics and social events, and I'd say, Wayne, come on, we're going to greet these people. And he would say, no, I'm not going to bother these people. I said, get out there and greet these people. But he had a, a very, 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 very gentle heart. And that is what I will always remember about him. Curry also had to deal with the unfortunate struggle of lung cancer, which ultimately took his life. But Howard says his look on life was always optimistic. His attitude, all throughout it, he, he faced it like he did many challenges. He, 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 he was prepared. And one thing that I, I, will, I, will, I was so happy, Wayne was spiritually in the right place. So, I mean, he was happy. He, he accepted the fate, and he was not afraid, and he went out his own way. And that's all we have to remember, that Wayne did things his way up until the very end. 
Yes, he did. Now, you have the chance to pay your respects to Wayne Curry tomorrow as he will be laying in state at the County Administration Building in Upper Marlboro from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Curry's funeral is scheduled for this Thursday at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden in Upper Marlboro. Viewing starts at 9.30 a.m. and the service will begin at 11 a.m. These services will be historic as Curry is the first county executive to pass away. Officials are expecting heavy traffic on both of these days so if you plan on attending or you'll be passing through the area be prepared and it was always cool ladies I was two when he was elected in the wow. office so to see his legacy being talked about by his friends is awesome to me and he was such an influential figure on Prince George's so Definitely, and we will be providing coverage both Wednesday and Thursday of the services so of course viewers can tune in for that as well. Thanks Great. Stephen. Thanks Stephen. Meantime, Wayne Curry, Wayne Curry has passed away, but his charitable fund will all allow his service and passion to Prince George's County to continue on. Today, the Prince George's Democratic Central Committee contributed $1,500 to the Wayne K. Curry Lung Cancer Disparity Awareness Fund. Terry Spigner, a close friend of Curry's, says the political icon wanted to bring attention to lung cancer and the effects it had on the African-American community. Well, the Central Committee, um which is the Democratic Party for Prince George's County, has decided to make a contribution to the Wayne Curry Foundation for Cancer Research and uh, Lung Cancer Disparities. I uh, knew Wayne for over 20 years uh, when he was county executive. Shortly after I moved to the county, um, I was a community activist and, and did a lot of work with Wayne. My hope is that, again, we can get some more funding out there, hopefully some more folks to focus on the African-American community, why so many folks in our community uh, get lung cancer, uh, at a disproportionate rate uh, compared to other communities and uh, you know per hopefully bring some light to that and get some funding uh, to help uh, er eradicate this disease. If you would like to make a contribution to the charity fund, the organization is located at 8181 Professional F Place, Suite 275 in Hyattsville. Authorities are warning Prince George's County residents about a telephone scam that's hit the area. The office of the sheriff knows of at least two recent victims, both senior citizens. Deputies say the best defense against criminal callers is to inform the public about the scams which have been reported in both Maryland and Virginia. Well, just recently there have been two scams. Um, one happened in Virginia and here in the county we had someone calling um, claiming to represent Sheriff ha Melvin C. High and then we also had someone calling to represent the Internal Revenue Service. Um, what we want people to know is that you will never receive a phone call from the Sheriff's Department asking you for personal information or money. You will never receive information from us saying that we are representing the Internal Revenue Service. We know in one call, um, the caller called the victim and said that they failed to show up at a judge, um, at a jury duty date. And because of that, they, there was a judgment placed. And if they didn't pay a fine over the phone, that they would re it would result in an arrest. The sheriff's office says the callers demand the funds via money pack or other prepaid cards that can be purchased locally. Residents are reminded to never give out personal information over the phone. Anyone who receives a suspicious call should contact the Public Safety Commission, that phone number 301-352-1200. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Gina Barti. 